Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 2, 2022, question 7. This is the first of the longer questions. So a company makes and sells candles of different shapes and sizes. A candle in the shape of a cylinder has diameter 10 centimeters and volume 450 pi centimeters cubed. Work out the height of the candle. Okay, so this is reasonably straightforward, I think. So we've got to look at the volume of a cylinder formula. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. We are given the volume, in this case, we're given the volume as 450 pi. And on this side we have a pi as well, which is handy. The radius, uh, the diameter is 10, so the radius is 5, which we've got the square multiply by h, so h is just going to be equal to 450 divided by 25 because the pi's here will just cancel. So h then is 18 centimeters. And that's it, 18 centimeters. Okay, so let's look at the second part then. A small candle in the shape of a cone has a volume 12 pi uh, cubic centimeters. A large candle also in the shape of a cone has a volume of 150 pi cubic centimeters. The height of the small candle is h, the height of the large candle is 2h. The large candle has radius k times that of the small candle where k is real. Work out the value of k. Okay, so let me just put in these values first. So we have two cones here and on the base we have circles. Uh, here we have a radius which is r, here we have a radius as well which is k times that of the small, so this one here is k times r. Now we have heights as well, so the height of this candle is, the height of the small candle is h and the height of the large candle then from here down to here then is 2h. Okay, so that's everything we have, and we have the volumes as well, of course. So let's work out the volume of both. So let's work out the volume of cone 1. So the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h. So it's going to be a third times pi times the radius, which we're squaring, and the height. And the volume of cone 1, the small cone, has volume 12 pi, 12 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's just simplify that as much as we can. So the pi's again will cancel. We can multiply across by 3, so we get 3 twelves, 36, and that'll give me r squared h. Let me just leave it at that for the moment and see what happens with the other one. So the volume of cone 2 going to be the same thing again. It's going to be a third times pi r squared h. So the volume of the second cone is 150 pi, a third pi, and the radius this time is k r, which we have to square 2h in height. Okay, so let's work through this one. Um, now, what we're going to do first of all maybe is just multiply across by 3. So if we multiply across by 3, we'll get 450. Again, by the way, the pi's will cancel. Uh, we On the right-hand side, then, we'll get k squared r squared 2h. So let's just uh, divide by 2. That will give me k squared r squared h is equal to 225. Okay, so we have both formula here, simplified down as much as possible, but if you look on the left-hand side, here we have r squared h is equal to 36, and over here we have an r squared h as well. So what we can do then is say 225 is equal to k squared times 36. That'll give us k squared is equal to 225 divided by 36, that's 25 over 4, and that'll finally give me k then as the square root of 25 over 4, which is 5 over 2. And that's really it, I think. Work out the value of k, where k is real. Yeah, that's it. So k is 2.5 or 5 over 2.
Okay, so that's it for that part of the question. Let's have a look at this one then. We have a third conical candle, has its curved surface area covered with a cloth. The net of the cloth is shown in the diagram below, which is not the scale. The net covers the cone perfectly with no overlapping material. In the diagram, the angle BOA is 216, that's in there for us, as shown, and OA is 8. So OA is 8, so we'll just put that in. This is 8 centimeters from O to A. Find the length of the arc from B to A in terms of pi, and hence find the radius of the cone. Okay, so we've got to find this distance around here. So happy enough there is a formula for that that we can use, so let's do that. So the formula for the length of an arc of a sector of a circle is the length is equal to, well, if it was a full circle, it would be 2 pi r. But this is only part of a circle, and what fraction of the circle are we talking about? Well, it's 216 over 360 degrees. So we have 2 times pi, which is, do we have to do it in terms of pi? Uh, find the length of the arc in terms of pi, so we're going to leave that in there. The radius of this particular circle here is 8, so we're going to multiply by 8, and then 216 over 360. So what we get when we do that is 9.6 pi, and that's centimeters because it's a length. Okay, so the second thing we've got to do then is work out the radius of the cone. So remember, this fits over the cone. This is effectively the net of the curved surface area of the cone. So the length from here to here will form the circumference of the base of the cone. The base of the cone is a circle, so the distance from A to B will be the circumference of that circle. So we know the length of the we know the length from B to A. So in other words, we know the circumference of the circle of the base of the cone. So the circumference, the circumference of the base of a cone is 2 pi r. So we know the circumference, which is 9.6 pi. So that's equal to 2 pi times r. Uh, we want to find r, the radius of the base of the cone, so that's going to be or is equal to, well that will cancel with that, so it's just 9.6 divided by 2, so that will give me or is equal to 4.8 and that is a radius, so it's in centimeters. I think that's all we have to do there, hence find the radius of the cone, give your answer in centimeters, we've done that, and the other one is in terms of pi, so that's fine as well. Okay, a spherical ball of wax is used as a candle. The radius of the sphere is 2.7 centimeters. Find the volume of a sphere. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward as well. These formulas are all in your maths tables. So the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So it's going to be 4 over 3 times pi from your calculator. And the radius of the sphere is 2.7. So you've just got to take the 2.7 and cube it. So when you do that, you're going to get uh, 82.448 to three decimal places, remember. Uh, and that is in centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed. Find the volume of the sphere at the three decimal places. Perfect. Okay, so part two of that question involves in the same sphere, so this is the same sphere, but there's a bit cut off the base here. So a horizontal slide is, slice is cut off the sphere so that the candle will balance on a level surface. The area of the circular base of the candle is 5.4 centimeters. So on the bottom, you can imagine if they cut off, if they cut horizontally across the sphere, the base of the sphere will actually be a circle. And the area of that circle is 5.4 centimeters squared. So from that we can find the distance, the radius of that circle, in other words the distance from here to here. Find the value of L, the vertical height, the vertical distance from the top of the candle to where the cut was made, as shown in the diagram on the right. L is bigger than 2.7 centimeters, because 2.7 centimeters, remember, is the radius of our sphere. Give your answer in centimeters, correct to the nearest uh, millimeter. So we've got to convert to millimeters. Now, you can imagine that the center of our sphere maybe is there. So the distance up along here is 2.7 centimeters. 
So really we've just got to find this distance here, the distance from here to here. Now we can find this distance. We know this distance here. This is the radius. I haven't drawn that quite right, but let's see. From here to here is going to be 2.7 as well centimeters because it's a radius. So we, we can find this, this distance here and use Pythagoras' theorem then to find this distance. Add it to 2.7 and that's it. So let's do all that. We have a circle at the bottom. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. The area of our circle is 5.4 centimeters squared. We have pi there and we want to find the radius. So this is 5.4. So r then is just going to be the square root of 5.4 divided by pi. And when you do that, when you do that, you get a radius of, so our radius is going to be 1.31105 centimeters. Now that's the, um, that's the answer I got on the calculator. So it obviously goes on a lot longer. We probably don't need that many decimal places, but um, let's just use them for the moment. So now we have this distance here. We have this distance along here. So that distance is 1.311 and so on centimeters. So now I'm just going to use Pythagoras' theorem to work out this distance up here from the center to the base. So I'm going to take 1.31105817, square it plus we'll call this distance here maybe x and that's going to be x squared and that's equal to 2.7 squared so x squared is equal to 2 well actually you know what I'll do I'll do the whole lot x is equal to the square root of 2.7 squared minus 1.31105817 squared and when you do that you get an x value of 2.36 so that means then finally L is equal to this amount here plus 2.7 and when you do that you get 5, well I'll write it out, 2.360323 and that's going to give me uh, 5.06032 and so on. Now that's in centimeters, so we want millimeters, so that's going to be equal to 51 millimeters. So that's the L then. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's move on to the next one then. Here we have a square, I think, yeah, part of the logo. Of the company shown below, ABCD is a square with sides of length 30 centimeters. Right, so ABCD is a square, sides of length 30 centimeters. The points E and F are the midpoints, so this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. This is going to be 15, 15, 15, 15, and so on. The lines EC and FB are perpendicular, okay, so that's 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there. 90 degrees there. Use similar triangles or trigonometry to find the length EO, so we've got to find that length there. Give your answer in the form A root B. Okay, so we're going to use similar triangles, I think. Uh, there's a few, there are one, two, three triangles there. Let's use this blue triangle here and also this big triangle here as well. So I'm going to show that those two are similar first of all. Uh, looking at triangles, um, E, O, B, and triangle E, C, B. Okay, so what we're going to do is say that the angle E, O, B is equal to the angle E, B, C equal to 90 degrees, we're given that. We're given both of those. So in other words, I'm saying that this angle here, EOB, this one here, is equal to EBC, this angle here, because we're told that it's a square. Okay, we're also looking at the angle 
uh, B E O, so we're going to take the angle B E O is equal to the angle C E B or B E C. Why? Because they are common angles. That was a common angle. In other words, what I'm saying here is B E O, B E O. This angle here in the small blue triangle is equal to B E C. B E C in the larger triangle here. So it's a common angle. Therefore, I can say now that angle E B C is equal to angle E C B. I'll just say angles in a triangle. So in other words, if two of the angles, if two of the angles in the small triangle are the same as two of the triangles in the larger triangle, then the third angle must be the same as well. So therefore, we can now say, therefore, triangles E, O, B, and E, C, B are similar. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just draw the uh, two triangles. So let's take the smaller one and the larger one. And let's just put them in the same orientation and put in the, the angles and sides and so on. So if I take the smaller one here, this is going to be O here. Uh, this will be E up here and B out here. The larger one you've got B down here, got C here, and E up here. Now the two right angles are in the same orientation, so E then is going to be the same, so B E C, B E C is going to be the same as O E B because they're common, remember we said that they were common, so those two angles are the same, and this angle here must be the same as this angle here. Now just to put in the, the lengths then, we know that this is going to be 30 centimeters along here and 15 centimeters up along here. So what can we do with this? Let's see. We also know, by the way, that the hypotenuse for the small one is also 15 centimeters here. Now what have we got to work out? We've got to work out OE, so we've got to work out this one here. Now we can't really do the similar triangles equations at the moment because uh, we have this side here and this side here, but we need this one and we don't have this one here. So what I'm going to do is just work out this side here using Pythagoras' theorem. So let's do that. So I'll just do it over here. So we have 15 squared plus 30 squared is equal to uh, EC squared. So that'll give me EC, EC then. You just got to do all that on your calculator. And what you get then for EC is 15 root 5 centimeters. Okay, so now we know that this here is 15 root 5 centimeters. So now we can do our similar triangles kind of equations. So let's do that. We can say... 15 over OE, so I'll do it down here, so 15 over OE, the distance from O to E, is going to be equal to 15 root 5 over 15. So that will give me the distance from O to E then is going to be equal to 15 times 15 divided by 15 root 5 and that will give me 3 root 5 centimeters and that's it that's uh, the distance from O to E okay so and that's it for this particular question